It was a very uh, quiet period, uh, unusually quiet for that, uh, for that part of the world. So, um, and my fear is that only one aspect emerged through the project uh, because of that. And, um, you know, what defines that place is uh, its uh, capacity to sudden change from one state to the other, from that state of uh, relative, maybe uneasy peace to uh, complete chaos. So, um, you know, it's that moment where all the cell phones start going and all hell breaks loose. The process of making a book, of editing a book, is the process by which I tend to understand, you know, what's uh, at stake. All I can say is, uh, and it's my instinct, is um, it's, uh, it's that I'm playing with time and space. Um, you know, 10 years ago, now, you know, but 10 years ago is now, and now is 10 years ago. And, um, you know, the, the, the space is that road that goes up from Hebron through East Jerusalem and so on. It's Route 60, is the road of the patriarch. At this point, now, Silwan is really the, the center to everything. It's the last Palestinian village in East Jerusalem that has access to the Al-Aqsa Mosque. And um, so it's, it's really uh, you know, the, the most intense place in East Jerusalem, a lot more than Sheikh Jarrah or any of the other places. Um, it's, um, it's a battleground, you know, a battleground for space, for houses, for real estate, for, you know, uh, it's, it's hard to describe how claustrophobic that world is. Especially Palestinian men have to uh, wait inordinate amount of time to, uh, to be able to work. So it's, um, it's a very, um, you know, the, that waiting. Um, that's, uh, that's actually one of the very brutal things that happen. If I want to uh, crush you, I will just waste your time. Everything I do, I do in a museum environment is always conceived as a piece. So there is, a, if you want, there is no curatorial space when it comes to me. I, make the piece and make it into the studio and, and everything is, is planned. So why did I want the piece to be like that? Uh, first thing I wanted to avoid any form of preciousness uh, in terms of you know, the white frame, the white uh, mat and, and so on, you know, the, the sereneness. Um, so I was trying to be as close as, as possible to the to the photographic in, in, in many ways. Then, you know, I'm, uh, I'm also, a lot of the things I do are actually musical. There's always a, a, a music that's, uh, that, that's, that plays in my head, strangely enough. Um, so I wanted something that was slow and fast and syncopated and simultaneous uh, things that happen within one frame at the edge of the other frame and, and, and so on. So I, I wanted to give a sense, sense of, um, of, a, of a disjointed life, if you want. Um, you know, as I explained this morning, I really function on strategies of open text and multiplicity of authors. So I'm one author, the camera is an author, Reality is a very forceful author, and so is the, the, the viewer. So my saying that 
you know, I want this or that experience for the viewer would be, uh, would be completely counterproductive, uh, directive, and, and, and undemocratic. So I always leave space for the reader to, make, to do their work, take the time and eventually surrender to the image and, you know, in that process, begin to explore uh, ideas that are not word related. I know it's painful for you as a poet to hear that. Um, but, you know, I, you know, those, uh, th that notion of open text, uh, it's, it's a strategy. It doesn't mean that I'm completely innocent or that I don't know what I'm doing. I know very well what I'm doing. Um, but I'm going towards um, a more progressive text than the one that would, uh, where I would kind of tell you or tell the viewers what, what they should think or feel. Mm -hmm.